Good morning, everyone. I see that people are um, starting to log in, so I think we'll just slowly get started. I hope you all enjoyed the 4th of July celebration yesterday and are ready for today's web meeting of the Renewable Thermal Alliance, the RTA. Uh, my name is Helle Gronley, and I am an associate research scientist at the Yale Center for Business and Environment and also the coordinator of the RTA. And I see that there are some new uh, names on the list today, so I'll just uh, give a brief introduction of the Renewable Thermal Alliance. Uh, the Renewable Thermal Alliance was initiated by the Connecticut Green Bank, NYSERDA and Yale University in 2016 to catalyze and scale a regional market for renewable heating and cooling through the provision of an independent nonprofit market building platform for financing solutions. And the RTA is a growing multi-state and industry network of market participants, uh, policymakers, and industry stakeholders, and has grown to more than 250 individuals over the two years. Uh, we are organizing, uh, among others, we are organizing web meetings, and um, that's part of how the RTA engaged to share insight and best practices in the sector. And today, um, Kevin Bork will tell us more about RedScreen, which is a tool to evaluate engineering and financial, financial aspects of energy projects. But before I introduce today's speaker, I will provide some practical details and also some short updates from the RTA. And I'm starting with the updates. Uh, the RTA just launched the RTA Seed Innovation Grant. Um, more information there. Uh, and the purpose of the grant is to advance the mission of the RTA by supporting seed innovations that could build market platforms for low carbon heating and cooling. And the competition will open in September. And in the meantime, you can learn more about the, the grant through the link that is on the slide that shows. Uh, we just uh, organized the Renewable Heating and Cooling Workshop together with uh, the Northeast Energy Efficiency Partnership. And the presentations from the workshop can be found on the web or the event page. Um, you could also see the link uh, on the slide here. I would also like to um, remind you of the next uh, RTA web meeting, which is on July 24th. And uh, Susanna Hunt, who is the president of Hunt Green LLC, will present uh, the story of Hunt Green Vineyard Yards um, going through seven generations and um, the geothermal system that they have um, installed, among others. Um, you were muted upon entry and have to unmute yourself for the Q&A section. Alternatively, you could send your question by the chat function. The icon for unmuting yourself can be found in the lower left-hand corner of the Zoom window. And um, we will also post the um, presentation on the RTA discussion forum on Basecamp following the web meeting. And this time we will also uh, post it on YouTube. Uh, then over to today's topic. And um, Kevin, you can prepare to share um, your um, your slides. Okay, great. Kevin <laughs> Kevin Bork is a project engineer at Red Screen Software um, at Natural Resources Canada, where he has been for the last fourteen years. And before Red Screen, Kevin worked for DNV GL and Shell for a few years, and among others, he was involved in designing like wind farms in Canada. He has a Bachelor of Engineering, Mining and Engineer, Mining Engineering and Remote Sensing from McGill University and an MBA from the University of Calgary. Uh, Kevin will present Red Screen uh, and the opportunities that this tool can offer renewable heating and cooling projects. Um, Red Screen enables its user to identify and assess whether or not proposed clean energy projects make engineering and financial sense. Um, with that, I'll just uh, let Kevin run the show. Um, go ahead, Kevin. Thank you very much, Heli. Um, can everyone hear me? Have I unmuted properly? 
Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Looks good. Okay, good. Well, thank, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's great to have this opportunity to uh, uh, present to you today and uh, showcase uh, Red Screen Expert. Um, so my name is Kevin Borg. I'm a sen senior engineer with, uh, with Red Screen here for the Government of Canada and have been with Red Screen for almost 15 years now. Um, and so today what I think I'd like to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about Red Screen, but I'm going to actually go into the tool and show how you can use Red Screen for um, modeling the feasibility of renewable heating projects. Uh, and I'm going to do that directly in the software. Uh, but maybe just to zoom out a little bit for those who maybe are new to Red Screen. Um, Red Screen is a software that's developed by the Government of Canada. Um, it's the world's leading clean energy decision-making software and uh, covers several analysis types, including benchmarking, feasibility analysis, performance analysis, and then aggregating projects into a portfolio-wide analysis. Today, today I'll be focusing on the feasibility analysis. Um, I have much more in-depth uh, videos that I've done that are on our YouTube channel. I can show you where to get those uh, later, and we're always adding new, uh, new content. But today we're going to focus on uh, renewable heating. Um, red screen can be used for energy efficiency measures, uh, heating and cooling and power generation, and even cogeneration uh, projects. Uh, we can look at renewable energy fuels and conventional fuels and all sorts of different facility types. Uh, red screen is used currently um, in uh, pretty much every country in the world. We have about 50,000 new uh, users every year downloading the software, and it's used in over 1,000 universities uh, and colleges, both for research and, and um, uh, writing papers and also for, for teaching. Um, like I said, Red Screen is developed by the Government of Canada and key partners uh, and subscribing customers to the software. Um, and uh, for those of you who may have had experience with Red Screen in the past, uh, we do have an, a new version that we call Red Screen Expert, which has been out since uh, September 2006. And we're continuously developing that and, and improving that. And that's what I'll be showing today. Um, so just maybe to show how Red Screen fits in with the uh, with with project analysis. So the core uh, users of Red Screen will be facility owners and operators. So these are people who own buildings, are operating them, who uh, have a stake in the energy of their facility, whether that be a wind farm, it can be a, a high-rise building, it can be a, a home, it can be a school campus, it can be a whole city. Um, so all of those owners or people who have stake in the, uh, in the energy performance and uh, the energy projects of their facilities. So those are really the core people, uh, our, our target, but there's also people around that who support it. So if you look around on the outside, uh, we have service providers. So engineering, architecture, consulting firms, uh, project developers, uh, ESCOs. We have project, uh, product suppliers, uh, manufacturers, uh, dealers and retailers. Um, and then also the policymakers and funders. So we're working with utilities and government organizations. Um, and finance uh, organizations who will then support the projects and support the uh, the uh, various incentives or the policies around uh, implementing clean energy. And then, of course, uh, we work with, as I said, with universities and colleges to do training and professional training and research uh, to make sure that um, there's a, an, a tool that's out there that's easy to use that um, can allow people to do you know, easy uh, feasibility analysis. Um, just a couple of examples of those uh, use cases. So you'll see here, these are people that were actually uh, working with Red Screen actively. So being part of the Canadian government, we're using it within government ourselves, uh, Natural Resources Canada, uh, and also some industrial manufacturing like 3M, uh, they're using it uh, in Canada and globally. And then um, we also have several utilities, both gas and uh, electric utilities, who are using it to uh, help with either their incentive programs or help with uh, 
different initiatives that they have with some of their large clients. Um, and then uh, those sort of cover the, the around the circle that I was uh, talking about on the previous slide. And the lower row here shows some of the uh, facility owners and operators. So we're working with, as I said, municipalities, and there's a bunch of school boards here, um, and uh, university campuses. And what they're doing is they're using Red Screen to track their energy usage, uh, to create relationships between uh, that and, and measure any savings uh, and set that up. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to jump right into the software. And so um, if I open red screen here, okay. So I'm live in the software now. And um, when you open and download red screen, which you can do for free from uh, our website um, and you install it, this is what you'll, you'll get when you open up red screen. So I'm on the file homepage. And the circle in the middle here shows some of those, um, the, this is the project workflow area. And you'll see some of the words that I mentioned before, rescuing can be used for benchmark analysis, it can be used for feasibility analysis and performance analysis. So we're gonna focus today on feasibility analysis. Um, and on the inner circle here with the arrows indicate each of the various subsections within the software that you would use to do that type of analysis. So. Um, you know, the first thing you may want to do is to benchmark a facility to see, you know, if we're talking about renewable uh, heating, uh, how much does, for example, a school, uh, how much heating does a school in uh, New York State need? How much does a medium office size building in, uh, in the West Coast of the United States, how much heating does it, does it require? Uh, how much cooling does a, a hotel in Miami need? Uh, and those, these are the types of things that just doing a simple benchmark at least puts a line in the, in the ground, in the sand, that lets you know where you, where you stand. Um, so benchmarking your facilities is uh, very important. Um, once you benchmark, then what you want to do is you say, okay, well, how can we do better? And that's where the feasibility analysis comes in. So Red Screen is a, a feasibility tool that allows you to quickly analyze uh, the financial uh, viability of your pre-feasibility projects uh, and to be able to help do some preliminary ranking of them. So uh, should you focus on lighting or upgrading the boiler? Uh, does the uh, changing the, the building envelope, which may be starting to get aged or the uh, heating or cooling system, which of those have the uh, best payback, um, uh, best return on investment, and what are the risks and costs associated with, with all those? Um, and then once you have decided and decide to implement the project, it's important to start measuring its performance. And then so you will then start gathering uh, utility data and form relationships and correlate that with the, 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 the weather outside, how hot or cold it is, and other energy drivers. Um, and then once you've uh, been able to measure and validate savings, um, then you can re-benchmark and see where you can compare to uh, the benchmark. Uh, and then you can continue that cycle over and over. Uh, and this is for a single project, but you can also do this for multiple projects and aggregate them into a portfolio and then look at, say, all the buildings on a university campus or all the municipality, uh, all the facilities owned by a municipality um, and, and so on. Uh, Redskin can be done for power plants. We won't focus on that today, but you can do wind farms and gas turbines and uh, combined cycle. Um, and all, you can look at um, buildings and factories. So whether it's industrial plants, I mentioned we're working with 3M and some of the products they, they do there. Uh, commercial institutional buildings, so whether it's hospitals or police stations or libraries or uh, religious facilities, warehouses, uh, grocery stores, etc. cetera. Uh, and also low rise, high rise, uh, multi-unit residential, single-family homes. Uh, you can do a red screen analysis with those as well. Uh, agricultural facilities as well. So um, there's a big opportunity there for renewable uh, technologies, uh, renewable heat. Uh, and, and here's a picture of a greenhouse, uh, poultry farms, etc. 
Um, a facility doesn't have to be a building. There doesn't have to be four walls and a roof to define a facility. A facility could be, for example, street lighting uh, or other, other elements that consume energy uh, that aren't necessarily confined to uh, a building. Um, now I'm talking about whole facilities here, a whole, uh, but you can actually look at just an individual thing. So we could look at, for example, just solar water heating. What is the impact and the feasibility of doing a solar water heating project or doing fuel switching, say from natural gas to biomass? And that's exactly what we're gonna be looking at in a, in a moment here. Um, you can look at new construction. So what if, um, if you compare sort of standard construction practices with a new proposed uh, standard or new proposed um, uh, measures, um, or actually look at retrofit, so looking at a building and, um, and uh, upgrading certain elements of that building. And then of course we have lots of different things within RetScreen to help, help and support these types of analysis, including uh, e-learning channels, which I'll just briefly mention. If you click on here, you'll be brought to our YouTube channel where uh, some of those other videos I mentioned are posted. Uh, and then there's uh, a lot of other data and databases right within the software itself. Uh, and then some of our uh, partners, so uh, REAP and uh, the Independent Electricity System Operator in Ontario, uh, and then of course in NASA where we uh, stream near real time uh, weather satellite data from uh, every latitude, longitude around the world to do that performance analysis that I mentioned before. When you're trying to track the energy performance of your facility, you need good weather data and uh, we have a very long-standing relationship with NASA to do that. So let's look at a, um, I said, let's, let's look at a, the software and see how we can evaluate some uh, renewable thermal uh, heating uh, right, within, right within the software. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the feasibility analysis. So one way that I could start a project is by clicking on feasibility here. But I always prefer, and I would strongly recommend, that if you're starting any project, to start with our virtual energy analyzer. And so if I click on the virtual energy analyzer, uh, a map will pop up. And using this map uh, and this uh, control here, what I can do is using these drop downs, I can select uh, what I call an archetype. So an archetype is a standard or typical building construction um, that will get you between 50 and 80% of the way towards modeling a particular building type. So by selecting these drop downs, so let me select through them here. So you'll see, remember that list that I had on, that I referred to before, power plants, uh, uh, and then industrial, commercial, institutional, res residential, and agricultural. These are the facility types that I can model in red screen. So for example, if we wanted to look at modeling a photovoltaic plant, I could select uh, it like that. Um, we can also look at various uh, industrial archetypes, different types of uh, manufacturing, uh, including some of the equipment that may be used in the manufacturing uh, process. Uh, that's all in there as well. Uh, the commercial institutional list is, is uh, uh, quite extensive. So we have all these different types of facilities that we uh, may want to model, so uh, healthcare, so hospitals and patients or clinics, uh, we have office buildings, we have fire halls and um, so on uh, and, and so forth. And so these are archetypes which have been validated and get you a, a large part of the way towards modeling your, your building. So I'm going to focus on a school today. So let's look at, um, let's say a high school in Rochester, uh, New York. And so I've uh, pre-selected here already uh, in New York and you can actually zoom in and you can actually go in and select where the, the school is. So uh, previously I went and I found um, this probably looks like a school. There's a couple of fields here and some large buildings. Uh, so this is uh, probably uh, the school. And so if I click OK here, um, when I click OK, what Red Screen is going to do now is it's going to load that high school archetype and place it in Rochester, New York and gather the climate data for that and uh, do a, a pre-feasibility model for the whole facility um, for a high school. 
and, and, and adjust the energy calculation for the climate data there. Uh, and this will include costing data uh, for, um, it'll include all the costing data. So when I'm, I'm done here, uh, Red Screen has now brought me onto the location page. Uh, and I can see here that I have the location of this, uh, this place. If I click on this uh, climate data location, I can actually zoom in and I can see where a red screen will get that climate data from. And if I zoom in, I can see that uh, I've said my school is up here in the north part of the city and the climate station, the closest climate station is near the airport. And I can see here on the right hand side that the Rochester airport where it's pulling that data from is five miles away. Um, and then so I can click uh, OK and red screen will paste that data. Um, and if uh, your internet is working properly, you'll get a map here. My internet's running a little bit slow today. Um, and then so below we see the actual climate data. So we have some information about the facility here and all that climate data. So we have about uh, 13,000 climate stations within red screen uh, for all this uh, data. And you'll see that we have the air temperature and all these uh, various uh, elements of, uh, on a monthly basis. And on the bottom here, we say where that data came from. So some of it comes from ground and some of that data comes from uh, NASA uh, satellite measurements. And then if I go below, I can graph some of that data. So just right away, this is, uh, can be very useful just to get an idea of the climate and the, the heating, uh, heating requirements, the heating degree days and the cooling degree days for any location on Earth. Uh, this is very useful for that. I'm going to move now to the facility page. On the facility page up here is where you start to describe your building. Uh, we see that uh, we selected a commercial institutional and educational. There's that same list that we had in the virtual energy analyzer. Um, and here's where you can start describing um, the, uh, the, the project a little bit more. So I could say I prepared, prepared it for the Renewable Thermal Alliance. Um, and I prepared by red screen and I could put my name here um, and so on and so forth. So this information will help you as you move forward with the project to keep track and, and to uh, provide accountability. Uh, and if you do a portfolio analysis, all this information will be useful to help group uh, the project and uh, send out reports. I can add a photo here if I want. Uh, in the meantime, let's just put the sketch. Uh, I can update that. Down below, I have the benchmarking se uh, section. So right away, without knowing anything, I can see that a typical high school uh, um, has, a, has a benchmark of 24.34 kilowatt hours per square foot, um, and that this archetype is of a high school that's 155,000 square feet. So right now, what I can start doing is, if I have a particular school in mind, you can start changing this to match the school that you're modeling. But I don't have a particular school in mind. I just picked that one uh, off the map. So uh, right now, this already gives me some information that uh, you know a typical school will have anywhere uh, between 18 and 41 kilowatt hours per square feet of energy use intensity. Um, and that based on the uh, modeling that I was able to do, uh, I can get uh, down to 10.5 kilowatt hours per square foot, which is just over 40% reduction. Uh, and I'll show you how I do that right now. So I'll go to the energy page now. And this is the crux of the feasibility analysis. So the feasibility analysis allows me to actually model the energy use of my building. And you'll see here that the archetype has already preloaded all the, the various components that consume energy in, in my building. So you'll see here on the menu on the left-hand side, I have the heating equipment. So I have, so first thing I have is the electricity and fuels in the schedule. So what's coming into my building and, and when am I using it and at what temperatures? And then the heating equipment, how do I convert those fuels into usable heat or uh, cooling? And then the end use is how is that heat and cooling and electricity being used? So some of it's for building envelopes, and ventilation systems, and lights, and electrical equipment, and hot water, and fans, and pumps, and motors, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So this is how the building uh, actually consumes energy. And then I can also 
uh, optimize supplies. I can add renewable heat, for example, solar water heating or solar air heating systems. I can have renewable power systems, photovoltaics or small winds. Um, and all of this is summarized in this big table here, which tells me what do I want to include in my project. Um, so I said we're going to do some renewable heat. So let's look at the heating system. So let's say we're going to do some uh, fuel switching. Uh, this school is currently heated by natural gas, and let's see if we can switch it to biomass. So I clicked on the space heating system. So this space, this is the main heating system for the school. And I see here that in the base case, this school is heated through uh, natural gas, uh, and that the current boiler has a 75% efficiency, uh, and that the proposed case is the same. So I want to model fuel switching here. So I want to put natural, uh, I want to put biomass here. So what I need to do is I need to go to the electricity and fuels section. And I'll see here that here's my natural gas and the fuel rate that I have. And I'm going to add a fuel. So I'm going to click on the little plus button here. Um, and when I click on the drop down, I can see this long list of various fuel types and fuel units that Red Screen has. So you'll see here that uh, for natural gas, I have available in all these units. And I do have biomass here. So I can click on biomass. and um, and then I can enter, say, a fuel rate. Um, and just for, for fun, I'll put in 150. Um, and if I want, I can look at the heating value uh, for that fuel. And so if I click on there, I'll see that this biomass is defined, has a, a heating value of uh, 8,495 uh, BTU per pound, and that its equivalent uh, cost at $150 a ton is equal to uh, three cents a kilowatt hour. And I can change those units as well to um, gigajoules or million BTUs or therms uh, or, or whatnot. Um, now you might have seen in that long list, I had a lot of other fuels there as well. So I just picked this generic uh, biomass that has a particular uh, heating value, but there's all these other different uh, heating fuels. So if I say, for example, knew that I was actually going to be having uh, uh, bark from uh, birch waste, uh, I could click that, and Red Screen would use this heating value uh, instead. Um, and there's quite a long list here, and every time you select uh, one of these, you would get uh, its corresponding uh, heating value. Now, what if you know what your heating value is, and you want to specify that? Well, you'll see up here in the menu at the top, I have some options here where I have user-defined fuel, uh, I have a generic user-defined fuel and then a user-defined fuel gas and solid. So I'm going to open those and I have an example ready here. So um, if I go to user-defined fuel, you'll see that it gets uh, added to this list. And then on the left-hand menu, I get this tool under electricity and fuels where I have my user-defined fuel. So if you know what your heating value is, uh, you can simply put it in. Uh, on in a various units. So here's million BTU per cubic foot or megajoules per ton or cubic meter or, or whatnot. You'd put in the density of that as well as any emission factors if you want. This is if you want to put it under uh, heating value units. You can also define your fuel uh, under uh, energy units. Uh, if you want to get a little more detail than that, you can also define your fuel uh, using an ultimate analysis. So if I click on user-defined fuel solid, you'll see here I can do an ultimate analysis where I actually define the uh, content of the fuel, and Red Screen will calculate the uh, heating value instead of uh, it being just user-entered. So in the first one, you, I would have typed in this number, and here Red Screen is calculating it. Uh, and Red Screen can do this for biomass or uh, fossil fuels, depending on the, um, uh, on the method you want to use. Uh, and this is for solids, and if you have a gas fuel of uh, various biogases, you can use uh, that as well. So you say what temperature the gas will be at, and again, the ultimate analysis of that, either on a per volume or per weight basis, and Red Screen will calculate the higher heating value. Um, you might have noticed I do have a, a, a biogas tool here. So if I click on, if I'm in electricity and fuels, and I want to have either biogas or landfill gas, I get a tool that's specific to those types of uh, renewable fuels. So the biogas here, again, either on a per volume or per weight basis, allows me to uh, define the feedstock 
the quantity of that feedstock, and RETScreen will uh, calculate the, um, the actual biogas production, the methane content, and then we, again, we would define what temperature and the ultimate analysis of that gas, and RETScreen will calculate the uh, higher heating value or lower heating value for that fuel. Uh, and you can define your own, so uh, you don't have to use uh, this list of different feedstocks, although it is quite uh, extensive. Uh, you can also define your own feedstock and put in your own percent dry matter and volatile solids and the uh, production factor and, and so on. Uh, when it comes to landfill gas, it's a different model yet again. Uh, for landfill gas, what you would, um, RETScreen will ask you to do is uh, specify some details about the landfill itself, when it was opened and the quantity of material being put in, uh, as well as some of the uh, information regarding the landfill gas uh, generation itself. Uh, and what RETScreen will do is it will generate a theoretical and a a potential amount of uh, gas output from there, and if I use this in my building, I will get a um, I will get another line in here that shows where the use is of that fuel. And so you would need to make sure that you're not overusing uh, or underusing the available fuel for your uh, your project. Now, once I do those and add those in electricity and fuels, they all become available to me uh, here, and I can specify the fuel rate, the fuel cost. Uh, and again, for all of them, if I open it, the, this uh, heating value and fuel rate, you can see what the uh, heating value is for each of these. And you see I can mix and match units depending on uh, the appropriate unit for each of those fuels. So let me get back to my school. So remember now I've added biomass. I have a heating value, which I'll say is okay for now. I won't get into the more complicated user-defined fuels or uh, biogases. Um, I've given it a fuel rate. And now when I return to my heating system, um, I see here that if in my proposed case, I now have my biomass as a, as a fuel type. So I can select my biomass, and then I get my, uh, my uh, uh, my proposed case fuel will be biomass. I can say the seasonal efficiency of that uh, biomass heating system. And for now, let's keep that at 75%. Um, actually, let's say that that's 80%. Uh, we're going, while we're upgrading the biomass heating system, we're gonna upgrade its efficiency. And we're now changing the, we're changing the heating system. So we have to tell RETScreen what the incremental initial costs are. So what does incremental initial cost mean? So I can hover my mouse over this uh, text here and you'll see the mouse has a little question mark button. So I can click on the question mark and the RET screen help will appear. And uh, RET screen will tell me that the incremental initial costs are the costs in addition to what would normally be done. So for example, if my boiler here, my natural gas heating system is so old that it needs to be replaced anyways, and the standard uh, heating system to replace this is a natural gas boiler, the incremental cost is what I would pay on top of the natural gas boiler for this biomass boiler. Um, and so I can put in I, I can put in a cost here. Red screen also has a cost database. So if I click on the question mark here, um, I can see here that we have the biomass boiler and uh, we can have a minimum average and maximum cost, and the units are in dollars per kilowatt hour of heating. So you would have to put in the um, you'd have to put in the capacity of your heating system, and it includes uh, some notes here to, so that you know what you're you're dealing with. You'll notice that these uh, costs. There's some notes here that these costs are in Canadian dollars, um, and if you want to um, if you want to change the, the escalation of those, or if you know that you're in your particular project, say you're doing a project in Europe, or you're doing a project in Alaska, uh, or in India, and the, the costs are very different, you can always change those costs. So for example, if we were doing a project in Alaska, we may say, well, we know that the cost of this is 40% higher uh, because uh, it's remote, and RETScreen will automatically 
adjust the whole database for these. Uh, and if we say that, well, the, the exchange rate for um, between the Canadian and the uh, American database is, is 1.25, I could keep putting in those, and RetScreen will continuously adjust these numbers depending on the factors that I put in. Um, for now, I don't know the capacity of my system, so I'm just going to uh, guess and put in a value of $35,000 incremental cost on top of, uh, of that. And now when I go back to the include measure, I'm going to click on uh, include measure here. I'll see that I have uh, uh, some fuel saved uh, for the heating system. It has a certain cost, and I save a certain amount of money on that. Uh, and that measure has 8.7 year payback. You'll see here, however, that I've checked all these. That means for each of these uh, elements, I have uh, done something. So for example, in the heating system, what I've done is I've changed, I've done some fuel switching uh, from natural gas to biomass, and I've upgraded the efficiency of that heating system and it's cost something. Um, but that same base case and proposed case uh, comparison applies to each of these. So for example, if I go into the light section, I see that um, here I'm also proposing uh, changing the lights from fluorescence in the base case to um, uh, LEDs in the, in, the, in the proposed case. And moreover, uh, by changing to a more efficient lighting, that is actually going to affect my uh, heat load. There'll be less waste heat available. And so uh, down here, red screen, uh, ask for what is the space heating or space cooling impact of this lighting system. And here uh, it's been estimated at 70%. And so the waste heat from this will go and uh, affect the, uh, the heating in the um, space heating system. So if I go back and suppose I just want to isolate this uh, fuel switching project, what I can do is I can uncheck uh, everything here, I'm not going to include everything except my space heating impact. And you'll see that I have my $35,000 cost, I have a certain amount of fuel cost savings, and the simple payback is 5.3 years. If you remember a moment ago, this was uh, just over eight years, so why has it gone down? Uh, well, eight years is because uh, before I could recover some of the heat from the, the lights, uh, which means that the increased efficiency of this uh, new biomass boiler um, uh, I'm not getting as much gains from it because uh, previously I had a lot of waste heat from uh, the lights and so on and the other electrical equipment. And each of these forms here uh, really goes, can go into quite a lot of detail into actually modeling the building. This is why I like to use the virtual energy analyzer because it really allows you to focus on uh, the, the parts that you want and uh, you really can, you know, within you, within a couple of hours, you can use the virtual energy analyzer to get you 50, 60, 70, even 80% of the way towards modeling your building and just spend a little bit of time adjusting it to model the rest of your building. So now I have my space heating system. I can use the comparison section to see what that means. Um, it means that previously I had $62,000 of natural gas cost and now I will have uh, $53,000 of biomass cost. There's still a little bit of natural gas because I have the domestic hot water system, which I haven't switched over now to biomass. I'll just leave that as is. And Red Screen calculates what the base case and proposed case, what the fuel consumptions are for each of the fuels and the cost. And you'll see here below that Red Screen will aggregate this, this into total fuel consumption on an equivalent kilowatt hour basis for the heating, cooling, electricity, as well as what the plan was from our benchmark section on the facility page. I'm not gonna spend any more time on this. I'm going to move along to uh, the rest of the analysis. So remember here that we've just selected the, um, we've just selected the uh, space heating system. Remember at the bottom though, that I do have a solar water heating system. So I, there's also other renewable uh, heating and cooling technologies that I have. So if I go to, uh, the section for heating supply. It can add a solar air heating system, solar water heating system. Uh, and so if I go into the solar water heating system, again, this is a modeling that solar water heating system. Uh, and I can decide whether I want to 
include that or not. So by checking or unchecking this box, I am including or, or not that uh, renewable heating uh, technology. Um, so now that I've had this uh, uh, going in here, I'm going to go to the cost page. On the cost page in level one, uh, Red Screen uh, simply aggregates the information that it pulled from the energy page. So if I click on this show data drop down here, I'll see that that space heating system was 35,000, and indeed that's what I what I had before. Um, in terms of the annual cost and the annual savings, previously I spent $130,000 on natural gas. Now I'm going to spend $123,000. On, sorry, on natural gas and electricity combined, and now on biomass and electricity and a little bit of natural gas for the water heating, this is what I'm going to uh, uh, pay. Um, however, if I go to level two, you'll see that I can start really drilling down into uh, fully costing this system out. So if I go to level two, I can start breaking down. Uh, if this is a major project, you might want to isolate how much the feasibility study costs or the development costs or the engineering. Uh, and again, the uh, incremental cost for the um, the incremental cost for the heating system itself, um, and then I also have here uh, some O and M. So a biomass system will require some maintenance, and I can start defining that uh, independently here. You'll see here now also that I start breaking out what all of those costs are. That 123,000. How much of it is for biomass and electricity and natural gas, and, uh, et cetera. If I go to level three, I get even more detail, um, where now really I can uh, really break this down, and you may work with cost engineers or accounting uh, to really sort of break down the, uh, the costing of that project. And you can also have a cost allocation if you have certain percentages of each uh, area that go into various budget categories, um, or you're purchasing uh, in a different currency. I can select uh, what percentage uh, of, a, of a certain item would be attributable to a uh, second currency. But interestingly, uh, for uh, biomass projects specifically, um, or renewable projects, if I go down here to the balance of system, I can actually look at specific project costs. So I can look at, say, for example, if I'm doing a, a ground source heat pump system, the ground heat exchanger uh, costs. And Red Screen has a very uh, extensive tool here to calculate either vertical, closed loop, horizontal, or groundwater system what the uh, cost for that uh, would be. Um, I also have I also have whoops on level three here. I also have the um, uh, the ground heat exchanger. I also have a fuel handling system, uh, landfill gas collection system. Uh, solar air heating and solar water heating, uh, uh, specific costs uh, where you can actually break down, you know, the solar collector material uh, and so on and so forth. Um, I'm going to go back to level one of my uh, costs and move on to the emissions page. So we have changed from natural gas to a biomass, and so that will have an impact on our emissions. And so on level one, what we do is we say, we take the emissions factors reported by the state of New York, uh, and Red Screen calculates the base case emissions and the proposed case emissions. However, if you go down to level two, you'll see that um, we break down the, um, how the electricity is generated and the emissions associated with the electricity consumption of that building, and then also the heating of that building. So this is done behind the scenes in level one. Here we get to see a little more granular what's, what's happening. And so we see here that we have certain emissions associated with electricity and natural gas in the base case. And now our emissions from natural gas are uh, greatly reduced in the proposed case because we've replaced that by emissions for uh, biomass. And these emission factors can further be customized if I go to level three. So on level three, you'll see that now I can go and specify the emissions factors for each of these uh, elements. And so we see here, if I just go back to level one and keep this simple, that this project has uh, emissions savings of 350 uh, metric tons of greenhouse gas per year, which is uh, equivalent to 64 uh, cars and light trucks not used, or uh, let's see, uh, it's equal to 830 barrels of 
uh, oil in terms of emissions. Um, I'm going to go to the finance page now. So, um, so we just did a simple fuel switching project. How viable is this in terms of the economics of the project? So when I use an archetype red screen, we'll do a level two. So just like we had level one, two, and three in costs and emissions, we have a level one and two in finance. And you'll see here at the top that I have a section uh, that will describe the general financial parameters and the financing of the project. Um, and on the right-hand side here, I have a summary of the various costs and savings. Uh, here's that 123,000, uh, including biomass payments that I have, and 130,000 130, for the natural gas and electricity cost in the base case. And Red Screen calculates then, does a, a cash flow. Um, and I see here that uh, this project has a payback of 5.3 years, um, but that it has an pre-tax uh, an internal rate of return of 41% on the equity of the project, of the portion that I, I didn't finance, uh, which is really phenomenal. Uh, I see here that the net present value is $38,000, so this project is positive, is cash flow positive. Um, and if I scroll down a little bit, I can see what the cash flows of the project look like. So there's an initial outlay right here, and then uh, the, there's positive cash flows associated with the project, and then I finish paying off the debt and the cash flows jump up. So this is the uh, finance uh, analysis very quickly, um, but there's some uncertainty here on, on some of these values. So you'll notice that I just put a cost for the fuel. I said it was $150 a, a ton for biomass. I put the energy system at $35,000 on the incremental initial cost, um, but I'm not really sure whether those are justified or not. Um, uh, furthermore, I put a debt ratio here of 70% with a 7% interest rate. What if interest rates go up? What if this is 9%? How will this affect my project? Um, so you could go and change those individually, but Red Screen has a risk analysis tool, and the risk analysis tool allows you to vary many of those things uh, simultaneously. So let's look at the net present value. Is this project positive or not over the uh, life of the project. So suppose that we say, well, I want the net present value of my project to be positive. So uh, have a positive number um, in terms of uh, adding all the cash flows of the project. Um, so what I do is I select the net present value. I could also select equity payback or the IRR. I'm going to keep with, keep with NPV. And then I say to Red Screen, how much do I want to vary parameters? And in each of these tables, I get to vary two parameters. So in this first one, I'm going to vary the initial cost and the fuel cost in the base case. Remember, the base case fuel cost is natural gas and electricity. And so uh, I see that I'm going to vary by plus or minus 25%. So this number in bold here is the net present value of the current project as defined in red screen. So 38,430. I go back to the finance page, you'll see that it says 38,430 right here. So if I go to the risk analysis, that's the number. But if my initial costs go up 12.5 up to 25%, here's what the uh, net NPV will be. It would be 30,000 uh, at 25% uh, cost overage, my N net present value go down. If my system costs less than I anticipated, well, the NPV will go up. And using this table, you can see what the effect is of varying different parameters. So remember, we didn't know what the cost of the uh, biomass was. Uh, there's some uncertainty there. So that's the fuel cost of the proposed case. So if we vary the proposed case uh, fuel cost by if it is more expensive or less expensive, I can see what the effect is by following this column right here. So this is varying two parameters at a time. I can also go down here to the risk analysis and I can vary a multiple parameters simultaneously. So using a Monte Carlo analysis, I can on, again, either the NPV or the equity payback or, or uh, et cetera, I can um, change the uh, number, I can run 500 simulations or say 1,000 simulations um, and vary each of these parameters by a certain uncertainty. So for example, let's say well, that the initial cost, uh, we were quite uncertain about that. So um, 
the uh, the uncertainty uh, say forty percent. The proposed case um, that that includes the electricity and biomass cost. Well, I have a pretty good idea what the uh, natural gas cost might be in the in the future. So I'm going to reduce the uncertainty of that one. Um, and each time I do those, you'll see Red Screen does a Monte Carlo analysis and changes these uh, the values down here. You'll see here I have an impact graph. So the longer the bar, the more impact that parameter has on uh, the uh, thing that I'm analyzing. So here it's net present value. So you'll see here that um, the fuel cost of the proposed case really has uh, an overweighted value in, uh, impact on the net present value, whereas the initial cost um, have quite a significantly less uh, impact on the net present value. So what this means is that I should probably focus on getting uh, uh, the, the um, fuel cost of the biomass set for my project, because that will have a really big impact on the financial viability, viability of my project. If I go down, I can see here that uh, using that Monte Carlo simulation, I can plot the, the where that net present value falls for uh, each of these bins, and I get a distribution here of where that net present value is. So you'll see there are some cases, uh, non-negligible amount of cases, where the net present value is negative, and some where it's, it's positive. Um, so um, what I'm going to do is, since there's uh, only about nine minutes left. I'm going to wrap up in the next 60 seconds and then we'll open this up for um, uh, questions. Um, so what I'm, now that we see that the, um, it, that the fuel cost of the proposed case has the biggest impact, we can say, well, what is the minimum uh, fuel cost for the biomass in which I get a positive net present value? Um, so what I can do is I can go to the energy page, and I would uh, go here, and I could change this, and then go back to the finance page, and change this in the finance page, and keep seeing what that net present value is. But we have this tool here called the dashboard, where I can click on the dashboard, and I can get various parts of the model to uh, float in this window in front of me, including this one called financial viability. So I have here that financial viability section on the finance page, and I can see right here the net present value of 38,000. So I know that if I increase the cost of my biomass, I will uh, reduce the net present value. So what would be the minimum uh, or the maximum cost of biomass so that I have a net present value of zero? So let's, what happens if we had a $200 per ton biomass cost? And I can, by uh, putting that in, I can see that the net present value is negative $150,000. Well, what if it was 170? And using this uh, is a great tool to really explore uh, and iterate through your project. And you really get a good sense of the um, where your project and model is sensitive. Oh, now I've just landed on $160. And I see I'm pretty close to zero here. Uh, it's only five, $600 net present value at $160 a ton. So I've now identified sort of a threshold, um, keeping everything else equal. I have a threshold here on the fuel rate that I would need, uh, given all the other parameters in my project, to have a net present value of uh, close to zero. Um, I've really only covered just fuel switching. We could look at solar water heating, solar air heating. We could do ground source heat pumps uh, and all sorts of other technologies. Um, and I'd be happy to discuss those uh, with, with all of you uh, when you have time. And for sure, you can email me at, at any time uh, on, the, um, on my email right here, which is nrcan.retscreen.rncan at canada.ca, uh, or visit our website. There's a link there also to send me an email. And uh, with that said, with only uh, five or six minutes left, uh, I'll be happy to entertain any questions that you might have. Thank you, Kevin. This is great. And I just wanted to add that the Yale team involved in the RTT uh, or the feasibility study of renewable thermal technologies in Connecticut has been beta testing an earlier version of Red Screen Expert. And I can see that there's a lot of um, 
additional functions there. Uh, there's yeah. someone uh, uh, asking the question what the tool costs. Yeah, so red screen, so the, the, the basic version is free in viewer mode. Um, and everything I've shown you here comes with the tool. There's no cost to that. However, if you're using red screen in a professional capacity or uh, at, 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 uh, uh, um, at, a, at a university, we, there is a subscription cost of $869 Canadian uh, per year. Um, and that will entitle uh, any professional organization to use it for on up to 10 computers. Um, if you're a utility and using it for um, incentive programs, we have another policy that will allow you to use keys or send out keys to people who may be applying to your uh, incentive program. For uh, trainers, uh, there's also a way for you to use Red Screen in any of your uh, teaching, and to, we can uh, provide keys for that as well. And for universities, when you have a subscription, uh, if you purchase a subscription, uh, you can install it on an unlimited number of computers for that university, including uh, student labs, computer labs, and even student uh, computers, uh, as well as the facilities as well. So, um, so you, there is no cost if you don't need to use it in a professional capacity. And what that means is all the data-centric stuff, the saving, exporting, um, exporting the data, printing to PDF, generating reports, uh, and exporting those reports. That's all what requires a subscription. Great, thank you. And um, someone has raised the hand. I'm lowering the hand of DRG. Please ask your question. Yeah. Can you hear me? 